word of mouth. Before there was Snapchat, Twitter and TikTok, even before the, invent, uh, the inventing of the printing press in the 15th century, uh, people primarily w uh, relied on word of mouth to get the message out. And who would have thought that out of the mouths of babes would come such a, a stinging political message that would be repeated again and again as children played and danced singing a simple tune that the Wiggles still sing today. Bar, bar, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy who lives down the lane. But at its roots, this nursery rhyme is a political protest song that called out oppression and inequality that still has a message for us, young and old, today. Let me pray. Jesus, as we look at nursery rhymes and as we delve into truths of the past that we find in your word, would they wash over us again as a refreshing wave and encourage us in our understanding of you and the call that you place on our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. For most of us, nursery rhymes hold a special meaning. It could have been for sentimental reasons, a nursery rhyme that was spoken or sung over you as a child, or perhaps one that you have used as you have um, significant memories of those as well. As Lynn McCredden mentioned a few weeks ago, she spoke about nursery rhymes being almost like an earworm that stick in your mind. Whether they are crafted that way or over time they get distilled down to the essence of a short verse, they, like the wheels of a bus, go round and round in our head. Bar, bar, black sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame, and one for the little boy who lives down the lane. Currently, there are about 1.2 billion sheep worldwide, with about 200 different domesticated sheep that are believed to have originated from eastern Turkey. Over the years, these sheep have been bred for their specific traits, some for vegetation control, others for milk, cheese, meat and wool. They've been the subject of stories by Jesus which speak more about his loving patience, of, uh, the loving patience of the shepherd than the qualities of the sheep. They have also been the focus of January advertising campaigns, celebrating the ability of a piece of cooked lamb to bring people from all nations together. Before we dug up the Australian earth, the nation rode on the back of sheep, just like England had done years before. The origins of Bar Bar Black Sheep is believed to have had its genesis as a political protest rhyme stemming from the King Edward's wool tax. Edward I of England was granted customs duty per sack of wool in 12 75. However, 20 years later, England's war with France required money and Edward's royal seizure of wool was only released once a duty was paid to the king. This heavy taxing of the wool industry went on in various degrees and was met with protests by his subjects right up until the mid-15th century. The oldest surviving publishing of Bar Bar Black Sheep was found in Tommy Tum's Pretty Songbook from the mid 1800s, um, 18th century, sorry, and the words expose this protest song. Bar Bar Black Sheep, have you any wool? Yes, old mate, three bags, I have three bags full. Two for my master, one for my dame, none for the little boy 
that cries in the lane. There are various interpretations on who each of the characters are, but consistently the master is the king. Some interpret the dame as being the church, while others suggest it was merchants. And the little boy has been considered the, fa- the farmer or the powerless and the poor. And while over centuries the nursery rhyme has lost some of its political edge, we find that the issues of inequality in our community remain. But before we look at some of those things of what we can do today, we do well to look back even further and see how Jesus viewed the issues of inequality. Back in Jesus' day, having wealth and influence was often regarded as a sign of God's blessing. The life lived well. With the working class people living day to day, people often looked up with envy to those who had plenty, those who had the two bags full. Rather than getting drawn into making a judgment between uh, people, Jesus wanted to do more. More than just changing a situation, he wanted to change people's hearts. Leah read from Luke 12, 22 to 32. But to help us understand that passage, it's helpful for us to look first at what happened just before it. In Luke 12, 13 to 21, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then someone called out from the crowd, teacher, Please help my brother to divide our father's estate with me. Jesus replied, Friend, who made me a judge over you to decide such things as that? Then he said, Beware. Guard against every kind of greed. Life is not measured by how much you own. Then he told them a story. A rich man had a fertile farm that produced fine crops. He said to himself, what should I do? I don't have room for all my crops. Then he said, I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have room enough to store all my wheat and other goods. I'll sit back and say to myself, my friend, you have enough stored away for years to come. Take it easy. Eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, you will die this very night. Then who will get everything you worked for? Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not have a rich relationship with God. At the heart of the question and the basis of the nursery rhyme and its protest was a common theme around greed. Now, greed is a confronting word, isn't it? It sounds like one of those dirty words, those yucky words that, oh, no, we should just run away from. But it can be so subtle in its forms, and we don't have to look too far to see it. With the news of the global grain shortage, countries have pulled back their wheat exports to other countries in need. After all, we have a responsibility to look after our own stockpiles before we share them with others. With the news of the pandemic, people fought over toilet paper and stockpiled litres of hand sanitizer. After all, we have a responsibility to make sure I have all I need. For the nursery rhyme, It was to highlight the injustice and the greed around the holding of wool unless excessive taxes were paid. And the results of greed was that the powerless missed out. In Jesus' day, these two siblings that we read about were fighting over the division of their father's estate. The younger brother felt unjustly treated because the estate went to the older brother. The younger brother cried out, what about me? It isn't fair. I've had enough and I want my share. Or so the 80s song goes. Rather than getting caught up in the division of assets, 
Jesus directs his attention to matters of the heart. Consider the toilet paper scenes over the last few years. Fear drives people to take more than they need. Fear of not having enough to store up for later. A fear of missing out. And with fear comes a distrust of others. These are matters of the heart that Jesus wants to challenge. But Jesus looks at these daily needs as necessary as they are and calls us to focus on what is even more important than they. Because when we focus on what is more important, it helps us to keep the other things in perspective. Yes, a person is a fool to store up earthly wealth, but not to have a rich relationship with God. When we have a rich relationship with God and trust God's love for us, it challenges how we value, how we view, how we live. We are moved from self-reliance to love-reliance. We rely on and trust deeply on the love of God for us, his little flock. Picking up in verses 29 to 32. And don't be concerned about what to eat and what to drink. Don't worry about such things. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers all over the world. But your father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And he will give you everything you need. So don't be afraid, little flock. For it gives your father great happiness to give you the kingdom. With God's help, we are able to move from a position of fear of missing out and not having enough to trusting God's loving care that his little flock and his desire for us, and it helps us to shift our priorities and uh, our fear of not having enough to having enough as far as recognising that God's resources are there for us. And it helps us to shift our focus on how we use our time, our abilities, our energy, and even our finances. Jesus continues in verses 33 and 34. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven never get old or develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief Thief can steal it, and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Now, I don't believe that Jesus is saying that we should sell everything and then become destitute. That's not the point of what Jesus is talking about here. And that doesn't help advance the kingdom of God. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 10 to 14. Um, Let me just get that. He writes this. Here's my advice. It would be good for you to finish what you started a year ago. Last year, you were the first who wanted to give and you were the first to begin doing it. Now you should finish what you started. Let the eagerness you showed in the beginning be matched now by your giving. Give in proportion to what you have. Whatever you give is acceptable if you give it eagerly. And and give according to what you have, not what you don't have. Of course, I don't mean your giving should make life easy for others and hard for yourselves. I only mean that there should be some equality. Right now you have plenty and can help those who are in need. Later, they will have plenty and can share with you when you need it. In this way, things will be equal. When we shift our focus on what I can keep to the love that God gives, it changes the way that we live and what we value. It also transforms our communities as we share the resources that we have been blessed with, 
with others as well. Not to put ourselves in a difficult situation where we can't care for ourselves, but also rather we trust God, living in and with faith that the God of the universe wants to care for us. This is the confidence that we can have, that we can also be better, care for our communities better. When we move from the nursery rhyme of two from my master, one for my dame, none for the little boy that cries in the lane, and we transform that to one for the master, one for the dame, one for the little boy who lives down the lane. And after all, isn't that the sort of world that we want to live in? Let me pray. Jesus, it's amazing that even in the simplest of things, there can be such a a challenging edge to it. Whether it be the parables that you told about sheep and goats or a variety of other things through to a nursery rhyme about sheep and bar bar black sheep. Lord, we recognise that we do live in a world that can often be so full of the me that it forgets about the others, that it can be so focused on greed and keeping what we have that we don't release to others. Help challenge our fear, our fear of not having enough, and help change that to a reliance on you, that you are good enough, that you love us so much, and that you want to bless us with the storehouses of heaven. Amen. So how might we respond today? We've heard a a nursery rhyme, we've heard some stories from Jesus as well. So what does this mean? Well, which one of the characters in the older version of Bar Bar Black Sheep, the nursery rhyme, are you? Are you the master with the two bags full? Are you the dame? Or are you the little boy that's living down the lane? What can you do to help others experience God's love through your sharing? And what are you investing in? The here and now, or you are investing in eternity? And what if any adjustments need to be made? We're going to have some music played, and as the music's played, I encourage you to take out those response cards. For those at home, you can use the chat function or you can use the text message as well on the screen or the email address. Let's take some time to respond to what God is saying to us about how he blesses us and how he encourages us to share with others as well. After that, we'll come and we'll gather around the table this morning. God bless you.